بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فافحص عن النية وعرف الإرادة فإن المجازات بالنية قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إنما الأعمال بالنيات وإنما لكل امرئ ما نوى says really investigate your niya inspect your niya uh, one's intention behind any action needs to be really really inspected deeply to make sure that it's right wa'rif al irada and know your real motive recognize your real motive if you recognize your real motive then you'll know whether it's wrong and thus it needs to be correct am i doing this to gain praise am i doing this just for the money am i doing this just to uh, build myself up and get a better resume uh, some more entries onto my resume so it looks better or am i doing it for the sake of allah fa innal mujazat because reward recompense repayment is all based on intention in the sharia it's all based on intention as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that actions are according to intentions and for every person is that which is that what he has intended. So I think that really speaks for itself because when you really think why am I doing this and the way to think about that is that okay am I doing this just for praise? Am I doing this for payment? Am I doing this to get more acclaim and a better you know an award or something like this and the way to figure that out whether we're honest or not in that because sometimes you'll think no no no, i'm doing it for allah and these things uh, are just kind of side points you know so the way to really test yourself you're saying fafhas which means fahs which means like you do a surgery, you know, when you do a surgery, you look inside and look properly. That's that's basically what he's telling you to do. Right? So he said, how, how would you do this? So you, what you say is, okay, if I don't get paid for this, then would I still do it? If I'm not going to get any acclaim out of this, would I still do it? Like genuinely. And then you'll figure out whether you feel, oh man, if I don't get paid, maybe not. Do you understand? Maybe not. Now that's fine, that's fine. You know, like, as long as you think that way, it's still fine. Now what we must think is, what's the point of it just for the money? How much am I going to make out of this? You know, how much acclaim am I going to get? And, okay, with money, it's something you're either going to get or you're not going to get. They'll either pay you or they're not going to pay you in something, right? But when it comes to acclaim and that you don't really know, right? And in most cases, you probably will get some acclaim. If you do something well, you'll get some kind of acclaim. But then you think to yourself that, look, if I do it for Allah purely, that's my objective, then I'm still going to get my acclaim. It doesn't mean that it's mutually exclusive. If I do it for Allah, I won't be paid. If I do it for Allah, I won't get acclaim. Do you understand? So that's the way to kind of investigate ourselves to see what am I doing it for? Would I do it if I won't get that thing? And then say, no, let me do it for this and try your best. Now, the, 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 initially when we do this, we may not get, you know, we'll still be polluted. The intention will still be polluted. It'll still come in maybe, right? Because it's difficult. It's a mind game. It's very particular. Uh, but then eventually, inshallah, if we keep doing that, it can become refined. And then he says, walzim taqwa Allah. Hold on to, hold, hold uh, very strongly on to uh, fear of Allah because a Muslim Al Muslimu Man Sani Man Nasu Min Yadihi Walisani. Now he links this aspect with the taqwa of Allah. He says, Hold on to the taqwa of Allah. Now generally we feel taqwa of Allah is uh, making sure that we fear God Allah uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even when you know nobody's watching us and we kind of have a very limited understanding of the taqwa of Allah. So then he says because then he mentions this hadith Al Muslimu Man Sani Man Nasu مِنْ يَدِهِ وَلِسَانِهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُ مَنْ أَمِنَ النَّاسِ أَمِنَ النَّاسُ بَوَائِقَهُ That the Muslim, the true Muslim, is the one who 
people are saved from his hand and his tongue. It's part of taqwa to not be abusive to others. And the mu'min is the one who other, other people are saved from his harms. Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu says, Ittaqillaha bi ta'atihi. Fear Allah with his obedience. Wa ati'illaha bi taqwa. And be obedient to Allah with his taqwa. So fear Allah through his obedience. And be obedient to Allah through his taqwa. That's how do you do that? Do you understand? So, fear Allah through His obedience. So, th fear Allah through His, uh, 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 by, uh, sorry, bi ta'ati, yes, by His obedience. So, in His obedience, you have to fear Allah in the way you do it and everything else. So, you have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that regard. And then you have to be obedient to Allah through His taqwa because by doing taqwa, you are obedient to Allah. The more taqwa you gain is good. The more taqwa you gain is through doing more worship, and then by doing more worship, that will increase your taqwa, strengthen your taqwa. So taqwa and worship go together. Basically, do more obedience to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Well, taqaf yada min dima il muslimin. He really is emphasizing this point that your hand should be light, should be devoid of any of the blood of muslimin. Meaning your hand should not have anything to do with Muslim blood and murder and killing or in anything Your stomach should be free of their wealth And your tongue should be free of their honor So don't be abusive, don't be murderous and abusive with your hands basically And also your stomach should be uh, away from their wealth Which means to take things from them which are not ours وَحَاسِبْ نَفْسَكَ فِي كُلِّ خَطْرَةٍ This is وَحَاسِبْ نَفْسَكَ فِي كُلِّ خَطْرَةٍ This one is difficult. This is introspect with your nafs. Inspect your nafs for every thought. Inspect your nafs for every thought. We do a series of thoughts and actions and then we worry about it. And this is talking about, forget actions. Like we've done an action. Okay, why did we do this? Or we're doing an action. This is talking about every thought. How do you do that? Let's think about it. How do you do that? We just about managed to feel after three days, you know, like when something goes really wrong, that, hey, what have we been doing these last three days? How many wrongs have we done in these last three days? And this is talking about every thought that comes in our mind. How do you do that? Now that seems very, very difficult. And he says, uh, fi kulli nafas. Every breath you should be concerned about Allah. Muraqaba of Allah. Raqib. It's from Muraqaba. Which means you should be meditating over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With every nafas, every breath. How is that even possible? Well, let's see. Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he explains this. He says, make sure you repel the bad and evil thoughts from your mind. If you don't do so, it will become a desire. A thought comes in, then if you don't repel it, it will then become a desire. Okay, I want that thing now. Fahariba. If you get to this stage, now declare all war against this. If you don't do this at this stage, Sarat Azimatan Wahimmatan. Now it will become a firm resolve, not just a desire. Firm resolve, I want this. I I'm gonna get it. Wahimma. This will become your aspiration. Fa illam to you can still repel it and still fight it, still get rid of it. If you don't, then of course, what's the next stage? It's going to become sarat fi'lan. It's going to become an action now. It's going to become an action. فَإِلَّمْ Now what you have to do, it's an action now. فَإِلَّمْ 
تُدَارِكُهُ If you now uh, تُدَارِكُهُ If you now don't uh, make amends for it If you don't make amends for it How? بِضِدِّهِ By doing the opposite of it now Which means to abstain from it And doing a good deed instead صَارَتْ عَادَةً Now it becomes a habit This is the progression This is the trajectory Of how things come into our lives Their thoughts They become desires then they become wants and uh, firm resolutions. Then they become our himma. Then they become actions. And then they become adat. So try to stop it at any one of these stages at least. Stop it. Once it becomes a adat, now it becomes difficult for you to move away from it. So let us at least try now that anything that's already a adat, and I'm sure we have many adat, many uh, habits, we deal with those and we don't make any new adat. If we can at least do that, that's inshallah, that will be at least one benefit of the path. Don't make any new adat. If we really look, if we really look at ourselves, right, once you've become mature and everything like this, and you don't have any bad friends, is that generally we're probably stuck with a number of adat, generally stuck with a number of habits that just don't go away. Especially if you're a concerned individual, you probably won't take on anything new. Right? Every desire of ours that is problematic, every bad habit we have that is an issue, right? Then they are generally going to be something very old. That's what we're generally coming. I mean, generally, generally speaking, once a person is on the path, they, just, they don't really get into new bad problems. If it is a bad problem, a new one, it is generally linked to one of the old ones. You know? Somebody's got a problem with eating issues, like eating too much, just lust for good. That, that's going to be generally, everything's going to be related to that. Somebody's got a shahwat problem, desire problem, it's going to be related to that. You know, then they're not going to be cheating. You know, they're not going to develop, you know, to learn to swindle people. That if, the, if somebody's got a problem with that already, then that's probably going to be their main problem. But a person who's got a stomach problem, who's got a desire problem, right, um, a, sh a sexual desire problem, right, they're generally going to be restricted to these things. They probably won't go and start swindling people, right, and doing other kinds of issues. So it's these habits that have to be broken and to stop any new ones from becoming. And, and the reason for this is that um, for any ilmun ikhtiyariyun, any uh, volitional knowledge, any optional knowledge, right? Any knowledge you can make uh, get through choice. The beginning of all of that is always thoughts and whispers. Right? It has to start somewhere. For you to go and choose something, you have to have had a thought come in your mind about it. Otherwise, how do you go and choose something if the thought has never come into your mind? You know, there has to be that bridge to it. The reason is that thoughts, they make assumptions, tasawwurat. They provide these conceptions in our mind. Tasawwurat then make things bring 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 about uh, decisions about certain things and the decisions obviously then bring about the action and then an abundant repetition of them becomes an adat that's how it happens so uh, to not get not get there is to do salahul uh, khatir right salahul khatir which means to rectify the thoughts in the first place then they won't build up to that level unfortunately we only become we generally only come on most people a lot of people they only become concerned once they have a lot of issues then they stopped getting new issues but now we have to fight our old issues it's the very very fortunate ones who have been taught from a young discerning age to be very concerned about their thoughts so that they don't get into the wrong company at all and even if they do then they're very careful and they don't you know they they, they don't become affected
because they're very concerned about what it may what what it may do. <clears throat> I mean, nowadays, for example, with the exposure we have to media and everything else, l looking at a normal picture of a woman uh, for men, uh, look at looking at a normal picture of a woman on a newspaper or a magazine or a billboard, it's not like a big deal anymore. Okay, nudity we try to avoid, but no, normal pictures, what's a big deal? A lot of people think, right? So I was just speaking to an individual, he's not a non alim and he was just talking about some issue and he said, he said for us, um, he was just talking about his approach to ulama. Right? Uh, what, what got me was that he said, he says, you, you know, where you, even if you're looking at a newspaper or something like this and we see a woman, they will put our hand over it and read the rest of it. So we think ulama would do even more than that. So basically he was just mentioning that this is their action. That they put the hand on there so that they don't uh, you know, have to look at it. Now, even the free papers that we have, like the Metro, if you ever picked up, it's full of junk. There's about three pages of news on there. The first three pages and then after that, it's just literally all junk. And then even the standard is a bit better than the Metro, I think. Slightly better. But I think one of them, I remember, has a has a middle section called guilty pleasures right it has guilty pleasures and i think it's all celebrity gossip or something like that which is generally going to be filled with awful pictures and things like this right? so we're just bombarded with this because this is uh, this sells this is the world which sells it's just everywhere a person has to have their daily hit of these things otherwise the day's not gone well So that's constant food for addiction, basically. And the problem with all of these things is that once you look at them, uh, that leads to looking at more and more and more. See, because any whisper or any thought in the heart, it generally causes us to think about it and to keep remembering it. So we may get distracted, but it will come back to thinking about it. That's eventually what happens. And then after that, it makes us think, hey, we should do something about this. We should do something. And then eventually it leads to the limbs and then we have to put it into action because the limbs have to follow what's in the heart and what the thought and whispers are. So then after that, it becomes solidified and then it becomes a adat when you keep doing it. So what, what is being said is that the human being has not been given the ability to completely veil himself from evil thoughts. A human has not been given an ability that, okay, khalas, we're going to protect ourselves from any evil thought that comes in our mind. It's just not going to come. That would be wonderful. The whispering. That would, that's just, you can't do that. So, لا قوة على قطعها ولم يعطى إماطة الخاطر We haven't been given the ability to just remove that completely. فَإِنَّهَا تَهْجُمُ عَلَيْهِ هُجُومَ النَّفْسِ right? It's just going to attack. Except that أَنَّ قُوَّةَ الْإِيمَانِ وَالْعَقْلِ تُعِينُهُ عَلَى قُبُولِ أَحْسَنِهَا وَرِضَاهُ بِهِ وَمُسَاكَنَتِهِ لَهُ وَعَلَى دَفْعِ أَقْبَحِهَا وَقَرَاهَتَهُ لَهُ The only thing that can stop us from being influenced by them, you can't stop them from coming, but you can stop us from being influenced by them, which is by Quwatul Imani Wal Aql. Which means to strengthen your Iman by being with the righteous, by doing the dhikr, and Quwatul Aql. Quwatul Aql. Why? To really understand, uh, intelligently understand what is good for us, what is bad for us. That's using the aql for it and having that mind over, you know, that the, the, the willpower uh, through the intellect, uh, convincing the intellect that we mustn't do these things. To only accept the good thoughts that come in and to sift out the bad thoughts. Okay, no, 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 you've got no time for that. And one of the best ways to do that is to stay in good actions, to get yourself busy in good deeds and you have no time for these things. But you can't just get yourself busy in good physical deeds. You have to have dhikr to strengthen the heart so that you don't feel like you need, uh, you, you don't feel like you need to relax by doing this. A lot of people, they're doing very good deeds, but then they feel they need to relax and chill out by watching something haram. That's the way to relax. Of course, the best way is to remove any, 
you know, any ability to do so by remo removing any gadgets and so on. But I think that's extremely difficult with the way things have become in our life. I don't think that's going to happen. Some countries have actually gone pretty much cash, cash, uh, cashless. A place like Sweden, it's mainly foreigners and tourists that come in and spend cash. And the local coffee shops and that, they get very perturbed with that because it costs them more to deal with it. Because cash you have to count, you have to preserve, you have to save, you have to bank. When it's all cashless, it's all automatic. So some countries in the Northern Europe has become like that already. Uh, whereas uh, Germany and etc. And England is halfway. England is halfway on the on the scales. It's halfway. Germany is uh, Germany and Italy. Italy is still yeah, not that. Uh, you know, it's it's very uh, much into their cash still. But all of these things, it's all with the phone. Everything's going to happen with the phone. So it becomes impossible, nearly impossible to avoid these things. وَرَاقِبِ اللَّهَ فِي كُلِّ نَفَسٍ So now. Uh, be mindful of Allah in every breath. قال عمر رضي الله عنه حاسب أنفسكم قبل أن تحاسبوا. عمر رضي الله عنه said that take account of yourself, reckon with yourself before you are reckoned with. وزنوها قبل أن توزنوا and wait before you are weighed yourself, meaning your actions are weighed yourself. Weigh them yourself so that on the day of judgment you know that they'll be clear. We weigh these things beforehand so that we know when we go there it'll all be very clear. وَتَزَيَّنُوا لِلْعَرَضِ الْأَكْبَرُ And adorn yourself for the great confrontation or presentation. يَوْمَ لَا تَخْفَى مِنْكُمْ خَافِيَةً When nothing hidden will remain hidden. Nothing that appears to be hidden will remain hidden. You see, thoughts and whispers in the heart, they are that go around the nafs. Right? The nafs is basically, uh, um, no, these thoughts, they're like the seeds that you put into a mill. Right? Seeds are like what you put into a grinding mill. Now, if you see these proper grinders, not our grinders, but you know the big stone grind grinders, they are, mashallah, so strong because they're literally big slabs of stone and you just have to go round and round with them. And right? they crush everything underneath. So, when that mill is going round, you know, like there's a, they've got a buffalo or something tied to it and it's going round and round, right? It just goes round and round and people just go and put their flour inside and it comes out, put their, sorry, put their seeds inside and come out as flour. So basically when it's going round, it has to grind everything that comes into its path. Anything of the size that is able to go in, it will grind it. So... <clears throat> if somebody puts in their wheat, it will grind it. If somebody puts in their small stones, it will grind that as well. Whatever you put in there, it's going to grind it. So, likewise with the, with the nafs, it's constantly grinding and processing. You put good things in there, it will grind it and it will produce good. And if you put bad in there, that will also grind it. It has to grind whatever comes in. That's why it's best not to allow the evil thoughts to come in in the first place. So uh, Hassan al-Basri rahmatullahi alayhi said that a believer is, needs to be, you know, like we go and guard other places, protect other places, protect our homes, close the door, lock the door, uh, put alarms on, and electric fences and so on. You go in different places depending on the amount of, you know, we don't have electric fences around here. The most you'll have around over your fence, maybe. Right? is those spikes or something like this to just deter people. You go South Africa, places like this, they have bars on the windows as well. They have electri electrified fencing. They have a guard dog. They have guards at the door. We don't have all of that because the, the danger here is not as much as the danger is there. Based on the danger, that's how much we put on ourselves. So clearly when a person realizes that there are real dangers, then they should put that much more, uh, uh, more effort to do that. That's why he says, إِنَّ الْمُؤْمِنْ قَوَّامٌ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ the believer has to be has to basically stand up with responsibility for himself. Must recognize that responsibility. He should be constantly introspecting himself for the sake of Allah. And the hisab will be light on the day of judgment on such a people who did muhasaba of themselves in the dunya. Because obviously when we do muhasaba, 
we would be concerned about certain deeds and hopefully we will then sift them out then that is the less problem we have in uh, in the hereafter because you know you go with a proposal and the best proposal generally is the one that has been fully refined they've taken out whatever is irrelevant they've taken out the fluff and they've just got the focus they figured out how it's wanted to be presented they've presented it like that that's going to be accepted more easily right because the other people can relate to it likewise in this world it's the same thing وَإِنَّمَا شَقَّ الْحِسَابُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ عَلَىٰ قَوْمٍ أَخَذُوا هَذَا الْأَمْرِ مِنْ غَيْرِ مُحَاسَبَةِ The difficulty of the hisab will be on those people who did all of these things without any kind of muhasaba, without any kind of introspection. See, he then explains something. This is very interesting. He says that a believer, he's, he's talking about how we are generally in our everyday life. We suddenly see something that interests us. So we say, Wallahi inni la ashtahik. You know, I love this thing, I want this thing. Wa innaka la min hajati. I need you, you are a need of mine. Is it really a need? Because we like it, we make it a need. I want this, this is necessary for me. But the problem is that <clears throat> he's got some shuck maybe. I can't have you, be, uh, you know, he's, he's got some doubts around it because maybe it's haram, maybe there's an issue. Maybe it's a new new type of investment or whatever it is, or there may be some doubt about it. Sometimes you want something, but you're unable to get it because you don't have the money for it, or you have to go through too many hurdles to get it, or something like this. So then you'll try to placate yourself by saying, um, why do I need that for? Why do I need this for? It's just the mind works that we, the, the way we work with things. We justify to ourselves whether we need something, we don't need something. Basically what he's saying is that your nafs will never be completely devoid and free of these kind of motivations. This is going to be your constant challenge. Shaykh, Shaykh Ibn Arabi, he used to say that our mashaykh, his mashaykh, you know, before the 5th, 6th century, they used to do muhasaba of their selves over anything they spoke or they physically did. Their muhasaba and introspection was restricted to just what they did and what they said. And the really, uh, the, the, the really serious ones among them, what did they used to do? They used to actually write these things down. They used to record these things. This is what I've done. Because that becomes more grave when you've written it. It's not imaginary only. So I've written it, I've, you know, like, become serious. So if you go to a lot of these self-help places, what do they do? They start making you self-confess these things, write down all of these personal exercises, they make you start doing these things. So this is what the mashaykh have been doing all the way along for themselves. They don't need any Deepak Chopra and all these people to, uh, to help them, right? فَإِذَا كَانَ بَعْدَ الْعِشَاءَ حَاسَبُوا نُفُوسَهُمْ so they used to write down any, anything they said or anything that they did throughout the day and after Isha then they would look at all of these things. Who has the time for this today? The day that Isha comes all of a sudden, you know, you know we did so many actions back to back that there's no time for pause in between. Any time we did have in between has all been taken up now. Before, okay, you had TV. But for that you had to be sitting in your home. If you were on the bus, there wasn't much you could be distracted by except by reading a book. But now you could be sitting anywhere and your phone is going to keep you occupied wherever you may be. It's so small to be able to do that. So we have no time to think. But anyway, these people, they used to actually have time to write down after each action. And then they used to do make muhasaba of themselves. They used to bring out their record and look at whatever deed they've done or whatever they've said. And then they would try to they would try to deal with each one of them. If one of them needed istighfar, they would make istighfar. If there was something that they did which was really bad, they would do tawbah. And if it was something that needed the shukr of Allah, they would do shukr of Allah. Oh, alhamdulillah, I did this, this, this. Astaghfirullah, I did this. Then they would sleep. Now what a clean sleep that is. What a clean slate. Every night... You've just cleared your account. Wallahu, Allahu, Allah. That's just wonderful. I think we just don't even have that. We would have to probably sit after Isha if we even get that time. 
and then like okay what did I do today you know that would be another mental exercise I would be too tired for by after Isha to do that Allahu Akbar so they used to do that he says with this فَزِدْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ فِي هَذَا الْبَابِ However, Ibn Arabi says that no, we, we have to go beyond them in this regard. We've gone beyond them. We also do our thoughts. We also have to record our thoughts. فَكُنَّا نُقَيِّدُ مَا نُحَدِّثُ بِهِ نُفُوسَنَا وَنَهُمُّ بِهِ We are also going to record. We also record what goes through our mind and what we discuss in our minds. وَنُحَاسِبُهَا عَلَيْهِ And then after that we also make muhasaba of that in the evening. So you think we could do this? <clears throat> you think there's any way we could actually record things? I mean let's just try to do it. We've got two weeks inshallah until the next majlis. Let us see if every day for the next two weeks or or, or, I mean, I, 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 would rather, I would rather make it easy and say, let's do it for three days out of the next two weeks. But if I say that, what we're going to do is, we're going to probably say, we'll do it, we'll do it, we'll do it, and then the next week will come, right? So let's do it for the next three days. Tomorrow is Monday. Well, actually, today is Sunday. So today's Sunday. Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Let us try throughout the day to record any major uh, any you know aside from eating drinking any anything else that we do and like we go to visit somebody write it down right. we go out to eat write it down we read a book write it down we watch something write it down then at the end of the day let us look at each of these things and do shukr Alhamdulillah, we were able to visit a relative. Because right? that will help us to clear our intention in regards to that as well. And if there's obviously anything wrong, we make istighfar or tawbah. And we do that for three days. Let's see how we can do it. We'll, we'll discuss it inshallah when we come back next time. But well, let's do this for three days. Right? Of course, more days, but minimum these three days. Let's see how that helps us inshallah. وَخَفِ اللَّهَ فِي دينك. Fear Allah with regards to your deen وَرْجُهُهُ فِي جَمِيعِ أُمُورِك And always in every matter of yours have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَاصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا أَصَابَكْ And be patient over all the difficulty that comes your way Because Ali رضي الله عنه said لَا تَخَفْ إِلَّا ذَنْبَكْ don't fear anything in this world except your sins. There's nobody else to fear because in the grand realm of things, in the grand scheme of things, in terms of the hereafter, the only thing we have to worry about is our, is our sins. Because even if we are attacked or killed, I mean, and you do sabr, you, you still get something in the hereafter. For, if you look at it from the hereafter perspective. So the only thing to be worried about is our, is our sins. وَلَا تَرْجُ إِلَّا رَبَّكْ And the only one to have any hope in is your Lord. Don't have hope in anybody else that they would do something for you. And the person who doesn't know something should not feel embarrassed to go and ask until he knows. So when we don't know something, when we need to know something, go and ask and find out about it. Embarrassment for the Sharia to learn something about the Sharia is extremely harmful. There's no shyness in that regard. person should go and ask and should not learn. And on the other hand, وَلَا يَسْتَحِي مَنْ يُسْأَلْ عَمَّا لَا يَعْلَمْ أَنْ يَقُولَ لَا أَعْلَمْ And anybody who is asked, I mean, just generally refers to ulama, right? But anybody who is questioned uh, about something that they don't know, he shouldn't feel embarrassed to say, I don't know. I'll find out. That's why <coughs> Ibn Abd al-Barr relates, uh, he's got a very famous book called Jami'u Bayan al-Ilmi wa Fadlihi A compendium of uh, highlighting what knowledge and its fadilat is It's a wonderful book on the subject uh, He says that some of the Ahlul Ilm would say that you need to learn how to say I don't know Don't just, and he says you shouldn't learn 
to say, I know, I know, I know everything. And then make up stuff. Just be honest. That's why the greatest respect I have from among my teachers is uh, for, for, the, for the one that used to say that I don't know, I'll find out for you. Because I know he's being honest. And I know when others would, the way I felt anyway, that they were trying to make something up just to answer the question at the time. And I think that's unfair because, you know, we're not asking for your speculation. Right? One is that we know there's a complicated issue. We need speculation. We need assessment. Right? Because we've done all the research. So now I just need your thoughts on this. We're not asking for your thoughts. We're asking for the knowledge. And it's responsibility that you go and find out the knowledge. And mashallah, our Sufi sahab was like this. Uh, Mufti, uh, his name is Mufti Tahir Wadi, his name is. And I used to ask him a question. He says, um, uh, like, I'll find out tomorrow for you. And then he'll actually go and he'll bring me the book sometimes and say, look, this is what it is. <clears throat> because if you learn to say, I don't know, then somebody will teach you until you will know. Right? And if you say, I do know, then people will question you until they will exhaust you and you will not know. Right? That's why somebody asked Abu Yusuf, he was on a member. Imam Abu Yusuf Rahimahullah, he was on the member. And somebody said, ask him a question. He says, La Adri. He says, Anta taqul la alam wa anta, uh, wa anta tajlis fi hadha al-maqam. You know, you're saying you don't know and you're sitting up there. Right? So he says, yes, I'm only sitting here based on the amount of knowledge I have. Because if I sat here according, if I sat according to my ignorance, then I'd be up in the heaven, up in the sky. <laughs> We have to start some kind of introspection in our life. Without that, I don't think we're gonna, we, we can improve. We, we, we have to do our dhikr, etc. to fortify our heart, but to really understand where we're going wrong. And I'm not saying just the major thing. We, we understand the major things we're doing wrong. But even the minor things, when you start attacking them, in, attacking them and inshallah, introspecting them, then inshallah it will help us. Because a lot of a lot of minor sins we're probably doing without realizing that they're wrong, become part and parcel of our life. You know, uh, dare I say, even some major sins, and like dare I say that. Okay. So definitely some minor sins have become part and parcel of our life. We don't realize them. Probably some major sins as well. The only way to figure them out will probably be to to actually write everything down and then to introspect over them in the in the evening. So inshallah we, we try this for three days. Allahumma and the salam of Nikas Salam to Barakti Adal Jalali with Ikram. Allahumma ya hayu ya qayyum bi rahmatik and a sabith. Allahumma ya hanna ni ya manan. La ilaha illa and the subhanaka in a kunna min of all you mean. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad wa barik wa sallim subhanallah ila ali ila ala al wahab. Oh Allah, oh Allah, we ask you to assist us. Oh Allah, we ask you as self-confessing sinners to assist us, to rectify us, to forgive us. Oh Allah, to soften our hearts, to fill our hearts with your obedience, with the love of your obedience. <clears throat> oh Allah, there are many things that are part of our life that we'll be very embarrassed to have in front of you on the Day of Judgment. Oh Allah, allow us to remove them, allow us to purify ourselves before we have to stand in front of you on the Day of Judgment. <clears throat> O oh Allah, allow us to rectify ourselves. Allow us to reckon with ourselves. Allow us to allow us to weigh our deeds before our own deeds are weighed in the hereafter. O oh Allah, allow us to prepare ourselves for presentation in front of You on the day of judgment. O oh Allah, make that the best day of our life. O oh Allah, make that the best day of our life. O oh Allah, <clears throat> we are so intoxicated by the various things that we enjoy doing in this world. O oh Allah, that includes many times within it wrongs and sin sins. O oh Allah, and your disobedience. O oh Allah, we do many disobediences. We disobey you in many ways without even realizing. O oh Allah, many things have become part and parcel of our life. A lot of things have become our pastimes that are wrong. O oh Allah, we ask you for assistance. We ask you for discernment. We ask you for guidance. We ask you for help in this regard. O oh Allah, help us because there's nobody else to help us. O oh Allah, there's nobody help us but you. O oh Allah, we ask you for assistance. O oh Allah, we ask you for your compassion, your clemency, your forbearance. O oh Allah, 
O oh Allah, we ask that you grant us from your mercy. The rivers of your mercy are constantly flowing. O oh Allah, we ask you for even a drop of this mercy. O oh Allah, do not let us <clears throat> do not let us go without go from this world without having purified ourselves. O oh Allah, grant us a life of taqwa and purity. Grant us a life of taqwa and purity. O oh Allah, always grant us good company in this world. O oh Allah, protect us from evil and bad company. O oh Allah, always keep our hearts engaged in the good. O oh Allah, sometimes we become bored, we become tired. O oh Allah, sometimes we become bored, we become tired of the good. O oh Allah, and we like to just laze around and use our time for the wrong and for redundant, redundant issues. O oh Allah, we ask you for to keep ourselves constantly occupied in your remembrance and to have a purpose in this life. O oh Allah, accept us all for the service of your deen. Accept us all for the service of your deen. Help us all to further your faith. Assist us all in helping to further your faith. O oh Allah, we ask you for assistance. O oh Allah, we ask you for divine mercy to envelope all of us. O oh Allah, and to keep us and our homes full of your rahmah and your mercy. And to keep your wrath away from our homes. O oh Allah, grant us all unity. Grant us all congeniality within our hearts. And O oh Allah, grant us, grant us the ability to, to love you and the love of those. And grant us the love of those who love you. O oh Allah, we ask you for the karima la ilaha illallah on our deathbed. He is in all of the stages of the hereafter. And O oh Allah, we ask, we ask that you grant us the company of your messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hereafter. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifuna wa salamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.